Welcome back to Fall, Day 12 and 13 of the Stardew Valley Min-Max and 100% Perfection Guide. Today, we'll have a quick Skull Cavern dive and then a long day of gift giving, completing quests, resource gathering, purchasing items and upgrades, and of course the most important thing, trading spring seeds to the desert trader to obtain some winter seeds. Let's get started with Fall, Day 12. Today is going to be a neutral luck day, so if you remember last time, I had gathered all of these materials in my inventory, which would be things we would take to Skull Cavern with us, and I had grabbed a warp totem as well to warp straight there, but that was all dependent on if it was going to be a super luck day, but unfortunately it was not, so I'm going to put all of that stuff away and start tending to the farm chores. We don't have too many urgent farm chores we need to tend to, which is why I would have been okay with skipping over the farm chores for today, leaving them for the next day if we did have a super luck day, but who knows, maybe tomorrow or in a few days we'll have a super luck day, and I'll want to have maximum time at Skull Cavern there. So basically neutral and below luck days I think are good days to spend doing things that don't depend on luck so that on the super luck days we can utilize maximum amount of time going to Skull Cavern. You can notice I've crafted a variety of different items including a recycling machine. We do have a bunch of trash from our crab pots that we can start recycling. Some useful things we can get is cloth from newspapers, which is a rare chance, usually it'll just give you torches. And we could also get refined quartz from CDs, which is pretty good. I also went ahead and made a mayonnaise machine so we can start processing our eggs, another cheese press for the milks, and a preserve jar so we can get pickles and jam if we wanted to. We don't really need these items for any bundles or anything right now, but sometimes they do appear in quests, especially with the fish pond quests. Eventually we'll get fish ponds and the fish just ask for the most random items and sometimes so we do want to make sure we have access to every item in the game if we really wanted to. And of course we want to ship at least one of everything eventually. We are now pretty much done with all of the farm chores for today. And even though it wasn't a good luck day, we still will be going to Skull Cavern. Just not as great of a run as it would have been if it was a super luck day. But before we go there, I am going to go ahead and go down to the secret woods. Let's real fast check the traveling cart, see if he has anything interesting. Does not look like it, but we're gonna real quick hit up the secret woods to get that foraging XP up and the hardwood. And then once we do that, we'll just warp on straight to the desert. Today is Friday, and on Fridays, the desert trader offers cheese in exchange for an emerald. And the cheese will actually be more valuable than the emerald once we have the artisan cell bonus. But more importantly, we can eat the cheese to restore our health. At Skull Cavern, I'll use the normal strategy of ring switching, pausing, laying down lots of bombs, but probably not using too many crafted staircases. And I'll also try to blow up more mummies than I normally would because we are a little low on solar essence. And then that'll put us at the end of this day, making it to floor 76 which is not too bad, but we've only gained a total of 189 Iridium Ore today, which is a little bit less than I feel like we normally would. And that will bring us to day 13, another neutral luck day and a rainy day, and a very important day, because today is Saturday and Abigail's birthday, of course, but besides that, Saturday is the day that the desert trader trades forageable seeds, and we are of course particularly interested in the winter seeds, which will cost us two spring seeds each. So we'll see what spring forgeables we have left over from spring, craft them into spring seeds, and then try to get as many winter seeds as we can to plant in our greenhouse so that we can hopefully grow a crocus and snow yam for the winter foraging bundle. Today, we'll also be doing a bunch of gift giving all over the map while we make some purchases and upgrades and all that good stuff. 
but before we head off of course we need to finish up our farm chores i did skip over some of it but basically we just did the usual smelting organizing animal petting crop harvesting and right here you'll see me grab everything we need for today and as you can see it's a lot of gifts some community center bundle items quest items and of course any tools we need and we'll start off our route today by hitting up the secret woods then we're gonna make a stop at marnie's to give her and jazz a gift as you can see we have quite the assortment of items here i do have the amaranth for her quest and then i'm gonna give her a beet and beets do count as a vegetable and vegetables are generally a universal like by most townsfolk there are of course plenty of exceptions to that but the beet is a nice easy cheap item we can give to npcs we don't otherwise have a unique gift for our next stop is sam's house where we are met with a cutscene and this is sam's four heart cutscene which can be activated at any time when sam is home we are given a dialogue option here where the first will lose us 10 points of friendship with sam the second will gain us 50 points with Sam, and the last will lose us 50 points with Sam. So of course, in a min-max run, we want to actually go through this cutscene. Of course, I like just watching through the cutscenes anyway, but the ones that can affect friendship, we do want that extra little bonus, so it's worth waiting through, get to the dialogue option, and then we get a little bonus of friendship. For reference, most NPCs have 10 friendship hearts, and each heart represents 250 friendship points, meaning for non-romanceable NPCs you need 2500 friendship points to max out. Talking to NPCs will usually give 20 points unless they are occupied, in which you'll get 10 points. A loved gift will gain 80 points, which is further increased by quality. A gold would give 100, and iridium 120. Real quick, we have Haley's two heart cutscene, which is activated when Haley and Emily are both home. We do get a dialogue option where the first option will lose us 50 friendship points with Haley, the second option will gain us 30 friendship points with Haley, and the third one will lose us 30 friendship points with Haley. We're gonna give them both gifts real quick, and then back to what I was saying about friendship points. Of course, birthdays are the best for leveling up friendship points when you give people gifts as they multiply the points from that gift by eight times meaning an iridium loved gift will give you 960 friendship points which is nearly four hearts and that's of course why we don't want to miss as many birthdays as we can we're now gonna head over to clint's pick up our iridium hoe and then we're gonna go ahead and sell some iridium bars. Of course, we need to set aside five of those because we are gonna get a upgrade. I did bring the gold watering can. We're gonna upgrade that to the iridium watering can and then we'll be on our way. We're gonna real quick check if anybody's in the museum, which there is nobody. And then we'll head on to Lewis, give him a gift. Then we're gonna head on to Pierre's shop, the most important stop of the day to give Abigail her birthday gift. We have a gold star quality pumpkin for her, but what would have been even better is if we had gotten an iridium quality puffer fish, which is quite difficult. It's possible, but very difficult because puffer fish are a bit hard to get a perfect catch on, but that's okay. We're gonna sell some pumpkins to Pierre and then we'll give Caroline a gift. Unfortunately, we don't have very many summer spangles, so I do want to make sure I save one for her birthday, as of course it's much more effective to give the best quality gift we can on their birthdays. But it would be nice to get Caroline up to two hearts so we can get the cutscene with her greenhouse where she grows the tea leaves, and then we'll be able to unlock the tea leaf plant. We're at Alex's house now, we're giving his grandparents some gifts, and then we're gonna give him a gift. And you can see right here, he's doing his working out animation, and that's kind of what I was referring to. When villagers are occupied, you only get 10 points of friendship from talking to them, as opposed to the normal 20 points you would. 
we've made it to the community center and we're just stopping here since it's kind of on the way to the Northwoods area and we can complete a few bundles including the die bundle, the chef bundle, and the fodder bundle as well. And then we just need a wine for the enchanters bundle which we do have back at the farm. And then for the field research bundle we do need that nautilus shell which we'll purchase from the traveling cart on the 21st. And then we need the crocus and snow yam for the winter foraging bundle, which we'll get from winter seeds, which we'll pick up today, and that's it. We're gonna head up north to the carpenter shop, but it looks like we're first met with Abigail's four heart cutscene, which can be activated anytime between 12 p.m. and 7 p.m. on a rainy day, any season except for winter. This is probably my favorite cutscene, and why I would always choose Abigail as my spouse when playing casually. Abigail is known to be the most popular marriage candidate, but most likely this is because she's into video games. However, I'd always choose her because she's into music and playing instruments. Not only do we see her play the flute here from this cutscene, but we also know she can play the drums from Sam's band. In this min-max run, if time allows for it, I will try to date every romanceable NPC in the game just for fun and as a extra goal on top of maxing friendship with everyone. Back to the cutscene, Abigail asks us to stand under the tree, and there is no tree there because we chopped it down, but that's alright, we won't ruin the moment with her. And there was a choice of dialogue a little bit earlier in this cutscene. The first one, just doing some work, would have no effect on friendship. The second one, enjoying the weather, would gain us 50 points. And the third, I could ask you the same question, is only 10 points. Feel free to skip over, but why not take a moment and enjoy the music with Abigail. After that nice cutscene with Abigail, we're going to head over to the carpenter shop, give out some gifts, and make some purchases. And most of what we buy from her will be completely just for fun, not necessary. We're going to probably pick up a nicer TV, the calendar, the telephone, and the calendar and telephone do give us some information, but of course that can easily be found on the wiki, online. And we'll also pick up some crafting recipes for decorations, which we may or may not use to make the farm look a little bit nicer. But we'll also need them eventually because one of the perfection goals is actually to craft every item in the game. So these do count towards that. And then after that, we can go ahead and purchase a house upgrade. The second house upgrade, which basically just gives us a bunch of more space. And then the one after that will give us the cellar, which I actually don't find too useful since the most profit we can get out of it is from turning our starfruit wine into iridium wine. But this takes two whole months and iridium wine just doubles the value. So overall, you don't really make that much profit per day by casking your wine. Of course, it isn't bad by any means, since the income is pretty passive. All you have to do is throw the wine in and then take it out. But we will most likely want to sell all of our starfruit wine before the end of year one, so we can see if we can get the obelisks and gold clock before the end of year one or not. We've made our way back to the farm, and it looks like we have at least one of each spring forgeable, so I can craft 10 spring seeds which we will use to give to the desert trader in exchange for five winter seeds. And just for fun, I'm gonna grab a dwarf gadget and craft it into the farm computer. It does display some nice and convenient information, but all of this information we can figure out through other means if we really wanted to, so it's not the most useful thing, but it is cool. We can now warp on over to the desert 
and we'll be able to finally pick up those winter seeds. But first, we'll give Sandy a gift, and for some reason, I talked to the casino guard. Maybe I thought I had already picked up the club card, but clearly we have not yet. We do have to inspect the lumber pile by our house to grab that, so can't access it yet, that's okay. We're gonna chop down all the trees here before talking to the desert trader since we always need wood. And now we can finally make that very important trade. 10 spring seeds to get five winter seeds, which will allow us to complete the community center before winter. We'll finish chopping down all of the trees. Then we're gonna head on to the mines to finish up the day with a little dust sprite farming. Something that could potentially have been wise at the time was to buy wood from Robin and smelt it into coal with the charcoal kiln, but that also takes a bunch of resources to set up all of those kilns and takes time to actually smelt them. So it's hard to know for sure what the best strategy is, but for now, we're just gonna be farming some dust sprites until the end of the day and the end of the video. I know this was a bit of a shorter video, but the next day after this is a skull cavern dive where we make it to our deepest floor yet. So even if I skipped over a good portion of it, I do not think I would be able to fit all I would like into this video. However, I will most likely be able to start uploading two videos a week again, as opposed to one. Although there still may be some times I can only upload one, but we shall see. After some more Skull Cavern dives, we'll have the fair on day 15 of fall, which we'll attend. And then shortly later on day 21, we will complete the community center. So if you're looking forward to all of that, please consider subscribing so you can be sure to see the videos when I release them. As always, feel free to leave a comment and perhaps let me know what your favorite cutscene is in Stardew Valley and why. For me, it was the one with Abigail we saw earlier in this video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.